Which Starlink dish should you select for your RV or boat travels? There are two official options currently available from SpaceX and one recently discontinued option that is still commonly available. So we'll help you understand the differences between all three of them. I'm Sheree. And I'm Chris. And we're with the Mobile Internet Resource Center where we track and educate on mobile internet options for RVers and boaters. And of course, Starlink satellite is a popular option for keeping connected in your travels. Now, this is the third video in a three-part series. Our first video went over a Starlink as an overview, as well as the pros and cons for RV and boat travels. The second video went over the different data plan options that are out there. This is the third video going over the equipment, and this is our second edition video in this series. We are doing an update because there are some new options out on the market to consider. So first of all, what are the current dishes that are out there? So the two options that are available from SpaceX are the Starlink Standard and the Starlink Flat High Performance. Those are the two official options you will find if you are ordering on the SpaceX Starlink website when you're purchasing new service. But there's also the Starlink Standard Actuated, which is basically the older version of the Starlink Standard that was recently discontinued in early 2024, but is still available in uh, some retail stores and available internationally, and also very, very commonly available on the used market because it was the primary option for up until now. So there's a lot of the original Starlink Standard or Starlink Standard Actuated still out there and you would want to consider them. So the differences between these three different options, first start with the form factor, so the size and mounting options. Where are the differences in this? So the Starlink Standard and the Starlink Standard Actuated are kind of uh, the, the two mainstream versions of Starlink. And the big difference between them is the Starlink Standard, the new Starlink Standard, is just a flat slab of plastic. The Starlink Standard Actuated, the version that was common for the longest time, is a smaller, actually it's a more compact device, but it is mounted on a stalk. That is what the Actuated is referring to, is it's a the dishy is on a stalk with robotic motors that auto aim it. So the and cost reduction and technology evolving and the Starlink constellation becoming more developed means Starlink feels that they no longer need to be so precise about initial setup and aiming. So the Starlink new standard is cheaper to manufacture and has gotten rid of all those moving parts, which means it is a um, physically, in most cases, more compact to store because you don't have that big awkward stock any to deal with anymore. But it is actually a physically larger dish, which gives it some extra performance advantages, but is also a bit of a trade-off too, because a little bit physically larger as far as the big rectangle you have, but no more awkward awkward stock. The flat high performance model, which has been around for a while, is even bigger still. It is a big plastic wedge um, that is designed to be mounted out externally permanently onto a vehicle and it is the physically largest and heftiest Starlink that is available. Now the flat high performance dish is meant to be permanently installed flat on top of your RV or boat's roof and used officially in motion at high speeds. The Starlink standard Gen 3 is also flat but it comes with a kickstand that is meant to kind of give it a little bit of aiming and you do some aiming when you set it up and it is designed to be portable so you can move it around your campsite if you're parked under trees to get better performance. If you want to fly flat mount it, that one you'll have to get some third party mounting options and Starlink also officially offers a pole mount if you want to put it up on a pole like you did on the old actuated. Right. Now the next major difference between these different dishes is the router that comes with it. We have a Gen 2 router and a Gen 3 router. So first of all, what is the Gen 2 router? So the Gen 2, the original Starlink router uh, is a Wi-Fi 5 router. So it is an older version of the Wi-Fi uh, standards and so it is a little bit less capable for hosting your local network and this router also instead of having normal ethernet ports that you can connect in other wired devices used just a special proprietary connector to connect to the Starlink and if you the Starlink dishy receiver and if you wanted to use any wired ethernet devices you had to add in a special Starlink uh, ethernet adapter dongle that wasn't expensive but it was an extra part to fail and it was kind of this 
added to the rat's nest of wires and dongles inside your tech cabinet. So the wiring up other Ethernet devices was much more awkward with the Starlink Gen 2 router. The Gen 3 router is more advanced across the board. It is a Wi-Fi 6 router, so it's a better for hosting your local network, faster and more capable. And it has um, normal Ethernet ports for both connecting to the uh, Starlink um, new standard generation, which is what uses the Gen 3 router, or to other wired devices on your network. So the Starlink um, Gen 3 router works with the new Starlink standard. The Gen 2 router, the older one, works with the Starlink standard actuated, the old standard, and the flat high performance is what comes with that. Power usage is a major difference also between these three different dishes and a major consideration if you are doing off-grid anchoring or boondocking out and you need to provide your own power. So how much power your dish is going to use is, is a big concern. So what? how do the different dishes compare? Yeah, so Starlink across the board, it uses a lot more power than a cellular options do because talking to a satellite just burns through a lot of power. And the Starlink, one of the disappointments when the new generation Starlink standard came out, replacing the Starlink standard actuated was, you know, normally technology gets more power efficient as it advances, but the new Starlink standard actually is rated to use more power than the older Starlink standard actuated. So it is even more power uh, hungry than the older version. And then, you know, the Starlink flat high performance is much, much more power hungry than either of the standard options. So it is a much, much more of a power hit if you're trying to consider building it into an integrated off-grid system. Okay, so the size differences between these dishes also relates to their field of view or how many satellites they can see at any sort of time. So what is the differences of the field of view? Yeah, so field of view becomes very, very critical because the Starlink dishes, once they're set up, they do not move. Even the standard actuator that has the motors to auto-aim on initial setup, that is only for initial power on where it picks a quadrant of the sky. That's the area of the sky the Starlink will be looking at from there on out and the Starlink satellites are moving across the sky they're in constant motion so the field of view determines how many satellites and how much of the sky is actually going to be in view of the receiver and how much it can actually track now these this is where a very significant difference is between the very different Starlink versions is the Starlink standard that is the the current main option has a 110 degree field of view a little bit more than a 90 degree and that's what it can track across the sky the older standard actuated is partly because it is a smaller physical dish can only see a hundred degree field of view and that's big reason why SpaceX needed to have those motors so that it can better optimize where it is currently aimed when it first boots up to make sure it has the prime viewing angles. And then the Starlink flat high performance, because that's designed to not be aimed at all, just to be mounted flat once, you never actually will try and optimize its angle. Um, that has a 140 degree field of view. So it can see a huge chunk of the sky, basically from horizon to horizon with just a, you know, the, the tree lines and stuff cut off. So that one is really well optimized for a permanent mount on a vehicle. It's not going to lose signal as you change direction or anything like that. That is why it is the official option for mobile usage. And of course, price is the major difference. Now the two standard dishes both cost $5.99. So it is expensive, but it is a more consumer-oriented dish pricing. The flat high performance is $2,500, so it is much more of a high-end uh, option that is more for business class sort of customers. Uh, so those are the major difference between the dishes. All right, so those are the three options that are out there. Starlink has announced and has filed for a new mini version. Uh, we do not know much about it yet. Elon has said that it should come out by the end of 2024. The use case pricing, power usage, all the specs are not known. So we will update this video again when that comes out. And of course, we will cover it in the news. It'll fit in a backpack is about all we know. That's all that is known about this dish. Now, when uh, you're trying to select between these different dishes, you might be asking, well, which one should I go with? And a lot of it's going to come down to what your use case is. Do you want official in-motion usage for high speed? Well, then you want to go with the flat high performance. It is not officially authorized on either of the standard dishes, regardless if Starlink is enforcing those policies or not. Um, they could at some time, and it also depends upon the data plan, and you will need priority data to use it at high speed in motion. Okay. 
It also comes down to your power usage. Are you doing a lot of off-grid camping, and boondocking, anchoring out? Is you know, are you running a generator? Do you have solar? What is your battery situation? Do you want to conserve power? Um, and also, do you want the wider field of view? Uh, that high-performance dish can get you more coverage underneath trees or with obstructions, but if you have the portability of these smaller dishes, you can move them around to get around trees. For most of our audience, we're gonna recommend you go with the standard dish. The $5.99 price point is much more consumer friendly and you're gonna get just great performance with it. Uh, and the high performance will give you a little bit more performance, but $2,500 worth? Mm, probably not for most of us. Now, if you're considering between the Gen 2 or the Gen 3, the standard or the standard actuated, the old one, uh, we will be doing our March live broadcast with our Starlink guru, Dan Hemming, uh, going over his hands-on time comparing the Gen 2 and the Gen 3. So catch it later this month with us. If you're watching this later, catch the archive if you want to go in-depth on what the specs relate to real life. Yes. And there are actually some significant differences from the official specifications from Dan's hands-on real-life testing. So it's going to be quite an interesting uh, uh, video and test. So be sure to check that out. All right. So that gives you an overview of the equipment. Remember, this is part three of a series. If you want to know more about Starlink in general, as well as the data plans, go catch part one or part two, or refer to our entire Starlink guide, which is kept constantly up to date as all of this stuff continues to shift and change. So, until next time, may the bandwidth be with you. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.